aloha and um, welcome to Korean Natural Farming Office Hours for August 28th, 2022. Looks like this will be the last bit of August. Goodbye summer um, and welcome everybody to uh, being here. Good to see you guys all. It's like, whoa, it's like a global community growing from all over the world. So happy, happy you guys are here tuning in. And I uh, wanted to start today off with a little bit of inspiration. So let's see what's in store for us today. <laughs> and um, and today is biting through. Um, so there's an obstacle to the expression of truth. Withdraw into quietness and allow the sage to moderate. Uh, unity has been broken by one who's not being true to proper principles. This may be another or an element in one's own personality, or both. In any case, serious misfortune may result if the appropriate response is not made. The I Ching is very clear about our proper action when confronted with an obstacle of this nature. Withdrawal into contemplation and turning them over the matter to the higher power for a resolution. This is a time when aggressive action or intervention can only compound the misfortune. Use your strength to clearly separate yourself from incorrectness and realign yourself with the sage. It is always our responsibility to acknowledge where something has gone wrong, but never our right to punish. The administration of justice is the sole province of the deity. The I Ching teaches us to forgive, but not to forget. This does not mean one who reveals himself as inferior today should be regarded as such tomorrow. It means that we are wise to pay conscientious attention to the waxing and waning of truth in oneself and others. When truth predominates, we can progress. When it is eclipsed, we are obligated to withdraw and surrender the matters to the sage. So always, always interesting when I start these off, you know, sometimes I might get, get like progress or like, you know, possession in great measure. Today we get biting through and, uh, you know, I don't know how it, how it'll fit in. Sometimes I read the I Ching and I'm like, how does that apply right now? But maybe somewhere, somehow. I'm acting in incorrectness, or someone else is, or both, which is usually the case, right? It takes two to tango, they say. You know, you can't just act alone, and if you got a problem with someone, it's probably you're, you're a bit of it. So, I, you know, with that said, in those things of my behavior this past week, I, it's amazing. I, I was like, whoa, I woke up this morning, I was like, it's Sunday already again, and I was like, dang, it, it happened really fast this week. I've been been busy, been dealing with, uh, had some pigs break into the property, um, and they were destroying, um, my gardens. They ate all my cassava. Um, so I had probably uh, 300 pounds, 400 pounds of cassava growing in the ground. That was, that was pretty much ready to harvest. And, um, and they had breached the fence and a whole family of pigs came in and, completely decimated all my cassava, which if you don't know what cassava is, it's like tapioca is another name for it, yuca, um, manioc, um, and I, and I call it the Brazilian term, which is cassava, because the, the cassava I have came from, um, Brazil. It's a nice, uh, light variety and really, really good. So maybe that incorrect behavior is the pigs, but, um, so ended up finding out where the breach in the fence was, which, I thought it had been secured. I had checked it just a couple days before, um, but it turns out they had been sneaking through a side hole that they had dug where basically I have a river and then the the, um, the water flows through a river and the fence was there. And over the years, which I'd been saying for, for at least a year, if not longer, that I needed to go up there and dig out the dirt and all the sticks that had accumulated against the fence because it pushed against the fence, and I actually have two pieces of fence, four foot hog wire, and they had it had 
basically created a waterfall. There's so much debris that the river had risen about three, four feet. And, um, and then, you know, I'm just sealing the fence together with state, uh, with, with hooks and things. And it had eventually breached that through and, and then split it. And so there was a huge gap. And I went up there the other day after just everything was decimated and they were digging all around my house. And, you know, nothing's more unsettling than going to bed at night and, um, hearing something destroying your garden outside and coming out with your thermal scope and your, you know, AK-47 and trying to find it in the dark. And it's just like, oh man, you, it's being under attack at night is not fun. And no, you know, I don't wish it upon anybody and having wild pigs come and just raid everything. It's, it's kind of a nightmare. So I was dealing with that most of the week. And then we ended up putting a bunch of snares in the valley. Um, and, um, and I, I fixed the fence hole, but then there was, there was still a pig inside. I, I knew because I can see they, they walk the fence line. And when I go up to my barn, there's a road that we walk on and it's kind of muddy and I could see the prints and I could see its trail through the tall grass. And I knew it was, I knew there was still a pig in there. So we set a snare and then, um, sure enough that night, um, even though there were a couple snares set for a while, um, I heard it at about three, four in the morning, heard the pig hit the snare and heard it start squealing. And, um, my wife actually went down in the dark and got her initiation of shooting her first big pig. And, uh, she went down by herself too. She's, she's hardcore, man. If you come, come around here, watch out. <laughs> she's a sweetheart, cooks great food, but also, um, you know, I bought her, a rifle last year and we've been practicing with it and she uh it's our first first um big kill so we got it we got this this uh probably I'd say it's about a hundred hundred fifty pound boar um that we ended up there was there was the last remaining pig on the land the rest are fenced out so she got them and uh now there's peace on the land again and so um even though it says the administration of, of the deity is, or the administration of justice is up to the deity, you know, it, it, sometimes it's up to us. And, you know, and then speaking of other catastrophes on the farm, uh, I was up at, um, my, my pigs. So I have three domestic pigs right now that, that I've been raising. And I, um, just recently the pigs, um, one of them, there's a there's a male and female next to each other and the female is is going into heat and the boar dug through the wall to get over to her while she was in heat he you know talk about the um power of nature to compel you to do wild things that he dug through the dug through the fence the, the dividing wall and then subsequently she's a smaller pig so she got into his pen and then I thought, oh, that's cool, because they, I, when they were very small, I had them together to kind of condition them to be friends, and and they're they're nice, because sometimes if the pigs don't know each other, oh man, it can be gnarly when they're older trying to breed them. And um, so then then yesterday I come up to the pig pen, and I see a pig running across in in my secure like pig pen area where I've been taking so much. You know, it's, it's so heartbreaking to lose all my crops. And so that area is really well fenced off and also to fence the pigs in in case they, they escape, but also to fence the other pigs out to keep their food alive. Um, and I see a pig running across and I had my rifle with me because I had walked through the valley checking the snares before I went up to the pig pen. And I see, I see a pig run across. I'm like, oh, you know, like, and I'm like, no, that's, that's my pig. It's actually, her name's Short Ribs. And she was running across and I'm like, oh no, she had breached and she had gotten out of the pen. And that's where all my natural farming things are. Like my OHN, my fish aminos, like the, the can of fuel. And in fact, my can of medicine, my can of fuel, all, all everything, my plant foods, everything is up there. Right. And, and I'm like, Oh no, like, cause a wild animal of that size coming around, breaching things, um, you know, just smashing everything around. It's just like, oh, what a nightmare. Um, but it turns out that she was probably only out for about an hour or so, because usually I feed my animals around three, three thirty, 
four o'clock at the latest. And because I was dealing with these other pigs and this other problem, checking the snares, I was getting up there about 4.30, almost five o'clock. And, um, you know, she had been hungry because, you know, I didn't come up to feed her, you know, the regularity of feeding animals on time. And she had breached and gotten out. And, um, you know, and so so immediately switch gears, like, okay, I start feeding the chickens so they calm down, start feed the other pigs. And then, you know, she she's real nice. And, and you know, I'm, I'm, I love my pigs. They're really great to me. And, you know, was able to pet her, calm her down you know, cause she was spooked cause she's out of her, out of her home and not sure where she's at, but calm her, get her to come back into her, um, her pen and started to feed her and then jumped over the wall in, into her pen and, and ended up, um, screwing on some pieces of, um, you know, leftover, um, plywood that I had up there, which I was just like, oh, thank God that I had, you know, everything I need up there, I had a screw on screws, um, wire rope, a come along, um, you know, the pieces of scrap plywood to put down. It's just like, you know, as you start to have a mature farm and I've been doing pig farming since 2008 and up there since 2012, it's like, now I have everything I need. And it's like, ah, oh, that's the, you know, thinking you can just jump into farming. You don't have these things, but able to do this and seal the wall up. And then getting back to where I was talking about as, as saying to Suze, you know, Whoever says all you need is love, they're full of crap, man. Because <laughs> you need a lot more than love. You need screw guns, you need screws, you need plywood, you need all these things to live. If I was just on thoughts and prayers and love, I tell you, man, the the wild pigs would get me, the, the my domestic pigs would get out. You know, it's so much harder. It's just like everything is hard in, in life. And so you need a little bit more than love. Um, and you know, the soul, soul province of the, or soul responsibility of the deity is justice, but it's like, man, you know, uh, yeah, oh man, sometimes it's a, it's a hard life. So, um, you know, all you need is love is <laughs> not, not quite true there, but, uh, so my drama with pigs this week, all that going on, all that happening, um, and then, yeah, so, you know, life, life on a natural farming farm is always, always quite wild, but, um, yeah, good, good to see you guys all checking in from the world, you know, yeah, 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 Julia from Finland, the goof man from New York, um, yeah, all you, all you guys checking in, it's, it's been great, and, you know, you know what's actually been happening this week is a bunch of people have sent me, uh, videos and things about, um, you know, what's going on, what's, what's happening, how, how they're doing well. Um, so, um, so, and then, um, you know, Mitchell here, yeah, Mitchell even sent me a, you know, a really nice YouTube comment of just, you know, how, how these things have just improved folks' lives and just, you know, it's, it's really, it's really amazing to see, you know, cause I did, you know, when I first went to Korea in 2008, um, and I had, I had no idea what I was getting myself into, you know, of, of just, um, you know, like, like I didn't, I didn't realize that I would end up hosting a, a video thing and, and, um, you know, I just saw what I saw there and I was like, this is the technology I was looking for. It's like I studied computer science and I was like, you know, all into technology and stuff, but I realized agriculture is important and if i just sit on the computer and just or i was drinking rock stars and just like you know eating pizza and listening to nine inch nails you know classic developer right staying up till you know four in the morning six in the morning not even sleeping just like just hack, hack the planet right and then i saw that stuff in korea and i was like it just like i was getting into organic farming was getting barefoot returned back to hawaii where i had grown up after going you know studying computer science freezing my butt off in montana um, and I was just like, you know, this, this is what I wanted. I had no idea that it would turn into this, but I'm so glad it is. So glad to see everyone tune, tuning in from all over. Even, uh, Partita was, you know, just had these great comments and all these things. So, um, so Mitchell's asking here, um, do I feed my, do, do your pigs store feed at all or most food scraps from farm byproducts or do you feed? So yeah, I do. I, I cache a lot of food. 
Um, in fact, I have a, I have like a, a tote, like a big, two big totes. They're, they're papaya bins and they're, they're about the size of a pallet. So about four feet by four feet by about two, two, I'd say two and a half feet tall. And they're these big totes that ha handle about a thousand pounds of papaya. And so each, each week I pick up, um, I used to be able to get a full bin when I had more pigs. Uh, but subsequently, um, now I had to reduce my herd down a little bit because I can only pick up about a quarter bin now. So like I've been saying that, you know, the famine's coming and canary in the mine shaft is that, you know, feed is not available here anymore. You know, the papaya industry is going out. Um, the, the, you can't get feed. I was just talking to a, my wife was up at a, a farmer learning about milking and their stanchions and that. And they said they can only get about half the amount of alfalfa they used to get. Um, and so now I get about a quarter bin of that. But luckily I've been able to pick up um, some bread and milk and eggs from from a um, food distributor. <clears throat> through a, excuse me. <clears throat> from a, um, from a, a food distributor. And so... I'm able to feed them that waste product and I put it in another bin and the milk, I always, you know, I just pour it straight in and make can F protectors, right? Right away. I just take trash cans and pour in a whole bunch of the milk at a lactose starter. Like I'm not, I'm not using, um, you know, the, um, like I'm not using the rice wash water in that part. I'm just pouring in finished LAB into this barrel of milk because I just need to do it right then, I you know, and have it all happen. So I'm pouring in a finished batch into this, and it's all this really kind of gnarly, like zero fat stuff. Where I look at it, and it's like I get the organic cream, and it's just milk. It's just milk and cream. That's the ingredients, and then I get this fat-free Dairyland stuff and tons of it because I guess people don't want it, and it just goes to waste. Um, but it has cornstarch and all kinds of like, like barely even milk in it. And it's just like half and half, like half and half. It's not just because it says half and half. And like, it, like you got to read the label. That stuff is, it, oh man, it's kind of gnarly. Um, and, and so I pour all that in and, you know, it's milk products, milk, 2%, 1%, all this milk into a, into a um, trash barrel and then pour in some of the starter and within th two, three days, I get, you know, a thick layer of curds at the top, probably about 10 gallons worth of curds that I'll strain off there. And then the leftover, about 20 gallons of whey. And then I use that whey around the land um, to, to take care of when we, we're, we're putting fish out on the land. I get a lot of fish waste each week. And um, that in immediately eliminates the odor, helps it break down faster everything so um so this system of what i'm feeding my pigs you know that some is scrap some is farm waste i do not generate enough farm on my farm compost waste to feed these pigs you know i used to feed them bananas but now i sell the bananas and then i'll i'll buy gas to go pick up these other things so it's pigs are incredibly hungry um and, and what ratio of um, the seed um, protectors, like the lab that I'm putting into this, um, and does it have sugar in it? Um, yeah, yep, they, it does have sugar in it. And so I am creating some contamination in there of the sugar versus I'm not getting just pure lab. I'm getting other microbes to grow. In fact, it's it's kind of a, um, it's, not the, it's not the most clean process, so to say. Like I don't drink that myself. Um, but the curds come out nice, you know, um, I don't think there's much contamination in there. Plus the pigs are eating dirt and all this stuff anyway, like they're pretty hardcore animals. Not to say there's any abuse in this system, like I'm really trying to keep it as clean as possible. But yeah, I just pour in the, fi the you know, finished lab. And the ratio that I'm putting in is probably, um, let's see, about this much. Uh, what is this? This is 600 milliliters or so of finished lab pour about that much into a, a 30 30 gallon trash can so it's it's probably a little bit less than what's recommended but that's already purified strong good way you know it's already perfectly good stuff um into 32 gallons or about 30 gallons of milk and it turns out work works really well um so 
that's that's great for me and um so um so i wanted to just before before i jump into the things since I'm kind of talking about what i was doing i just want to show you uh you guys just what i've been up to a little bit this week um and i'm gonna transition this over hopefully the mic yep the mic's still going okay and so um what i've been doing is i put in this food taco here and then i've been hooking it up to a um to a moisture sensor and and um so let me and, and if i refresh this here it will um it'll pull in the most recent picture so right now 9 15 um, I have this thing set up so it takes a picture every 15 minutes of my food taco. And um, my idea is that I'm going to time lapse this because I did an interesting project um, in about 2010 era where I, I had a camera that would take a picture of the garden every minute. And we did this for three years and I ended up having this really cool time lapse of, of the garden growing. And so this one I set up in a little bit higher resolution, so I, I'm taking a picture every 15 minutes, which is fine for this here. I don't need every minute. Um, and my potatoes are growing. So these are all um, russet and um, uh, Yukon gold potatoes that I bought from the store that left in the fridge too long. They started to sprout, so I planted them in here. And then I ran this irrigation in this tubing. And what I'm doing is I'm keeping track of the watering here. So if I bring this other screen over, let me let me grab this and bring this one over. So you can't you can't exactly view it live um, through that screen, but this screen here is a is actually a live video that's happening. You can see the time ticking there. Um, and so what I'm gonna do here is oh shoot, let me see if I can um, let's see if I have to make VLC. Uh, window. Let's see. How do I make it float on top? Um, oh, trying to do this live. All right. Well, anyway, let me let me see if I can do it this way by bringing this screen over and bringing this screen up here, so you can see both of those, and make this one. Let's see. Will it get a little bigger? Let me get a little bigger. So you can kind of see here. And so, I, you know, I'm just nerding out, um, you know, maybe maybe this is the improper behavior because I spent a lot of time on this, but um, when I should be, you know, probably doing some other things. But I love this cross of like tech and farming and everything. And so if I go here now, um, you can see this live view and I hit watering down here and I hit start on this um, it, and then I refresh this page, um, you see it says that... Um, it, this this watering right here 9 23 a.m which is right now that it's active and if you look here and you see it let me zoom in here and see can you see that yeah maybe you see these little things are watering and then if i go and refresh oh but then this page won't show me the moisture center changing so it's something i'm working on right now um, but i can turn this on and then i can also turn it off here hit stop here and sure enough then it'll tell me that it stopped and it watered for 35 seconds here and you know i need to i need to in, you know uh re redo the style sheets and all that to make all this nice it's just a prototype but the water turned off over here you can see it's off and it gave me a timing so that i know when i watered it so i watered it today here for 35 seconds and then these moisture sensors, um, actually, if I go and tell it to go and moisture sensor, let me see, sensor measurement and read all my sensors, um, it will do that. And then it gave me an update here of that the moisture sensors uh, had changed. So if you see from the last reading here, uh, which was done, uh, what 8 a.m. yesterday or two days ago the moisture sensors have changed and so it'll it'll log basically all and there's four different moisture sensors in here there's one um, if, you, if you can see here um, there's one right there there's one right there there's one down at the very bottom of this and then there's one over there so I'm logging these four moisture sensors in here 
and just kind of, I don't know, you know, it's like a, it's kind of a silly project, kind of like, uh, you know, what, what are you doing? It's, you know, the, um, the famine's coming. What are you doing? Just, you know, spending hours <laughs> making all this happen. But I, I love, I love this stuff. It's like, I was, I was working on this and then Suze is like, well, you know, some people, some people go to the beach and hang out. Um, and like, this is your hobby. And she's over there playing some piano and learning. Um, she learned the song of storms and a bunch of, um, songs from Ocarina of Time. Um, do, 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 do. And so she can play that all on this keyboard right here that we got for our wedding. And she's been just jamming that out. And, you know, I look and I feel kind of guilty doing this stuff. And she's like, well, I'm over here playing this, you know, like what's, you know, I always feel like I got to be driven and work and like do more and build. And it's like, here I am doing this. Um, and what the actual microcontroller I'm using is uh, ESP8266. Uh, 8, uh, it's also called a Node MCU. And I got those. It's just a, it's like a uh, 5 to $10 microcontroller um, on the, um, that I got. And, and so it's, it's cool because it has Wi-Fi built in. Uh, the one thing that is not, um, that I don't like about it is it only has one analog port. So in order to do these moisture sensor readings, which is why they're not happening at real time is I have to turn on the power pin for each one, wait a half second for it to power up, make a reading and then switch to the next pin, wait for five seconds or wait, wait half a second it'll take a reading and so for me to read all my moisture sensors it takes two seconds because there's four of them and so what i need to do is get another analog pin or get an analog to digital converter where i can read all four at once to be able to read all that data in real time because how cool would it be that if you're watching you know this um this this page here that if all these readings were coming in in real time of what, um, you know, how, how the moisture sensors are changing and then the water and then hook all this up with Ajax and stuff. So it just updates in live real time. So you're looking at it and, um, you know, I mean, that, that's, that's ideal, right? For me is to get these, you know, real time readings where it's like looking at it. Um, but yeah, it's just, um, so it's a little, little, um, you know, um, I don't know, passion project. And yeah, say thanks. Thanks for psychopath for saying, you know, don't feel guilty about it. But I just think, you know, um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's kind of funny to, to be doing this, but wanted, wanted to do it. Um, other, other things, if I do continue to head down this path of continuing to work on this, which I, I probably will, I've already spent, you know, good, good six hours, eight hours, even just putting in the irrigation line i had to dig it over had to put power out to the greenhouse had to do all kinds of things and have this camera going um is i want to put in a couple of temperature sensors so i was thinking a sensor in the soil and a sensor in the air and then also a um a little light sensor so i have these little um this sensor right here um which which measures um light it's a resistive capacitor based on light or resistive capacitor. It's a, it's a resistor based on light. So when light hits this thing, it changes its resistance. And so I wanted to measure the amount of sunlight that was coming in as well and just log all that data and put it up here and have, you know, on the website that I built, um, and make nice charts and ended up, um, you know, ended up writing, if, if you are nerdy, and this isn't, you know, I ended up writing the um, web server in Ruby, Ruby on Rails, because um, it's, it, I'm, I'm used to that. It's fun. It's easy. I love Ruby, love Rails. It's like, it's, this makes it so easy to do. And I ended up writing a little web interface on, in Arduino in C, or it's actually C++. Um, so the C++ is just a quick you know, just to access the sensors and no data storage there. And then it sends, it sends requests to the microcontroller to say, Hey, give me this data. And then it stores it in the database on Ruby on rails. So it, and then it made it easy to pull up the interface and all that. Cause it has a model view controller. Cause initially I was thinking I'd write all that on the node MCU. And then I was like, why am I doing that? Why not? You know, I don't even have persistent storage here. Why not just bring it to my computer, which is always on, and then have it run the server. 
So anyway, if you're interested and nerdy and, you know, want to learn about that, maybe I'll do a, a video on that if you, you know, drop it in the comments. Or, yeah, YouTube guys, I always, you know, comment below. It's like, you know, man, come on. Only say comment if you want to um, and chat here, you know. So anyway, so that that's what I've been up to. But what I wanted to share with you um, this week here a little bit is that um, let's start off here with uh, Rainbow Possum because I see they're here and um, wanted to just share. They, they sent me a little video here and, um, you know, this is their their TikTok channel and um, talking about the great results. And in fact, I think this came with an email. So let me I'll, I'll pull up the email and share. But check out these tomatoes, peppers, oh, melons. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Ducks, oh, nasturtiums, peaches, oh, look at those peaches, cabbages, oh my gosh, yeah, wow, berries, oh my gosh, yeah, all those flowers, uh huh, and the chickens, look at them happy, oh wow, yeah, so I haven't watched this, this is me watching it real time with you, but look how cool this is, I mean, this is this is the kind of stuff that again. You know, this is the inspiration. This is the stuff. These are the things that, you know, here I am taking my Sunday to be with you. And I thank you for sharing this back with me. So thanks. Um, thanks, Rainbow Possum. And then I also came with an email here. So um, hopefully you don't mind me sharing this here. Um, but I was just going to read a little bit of this where it says, you know, I just wanted to share what I've been doing. Um, and she sent that video here. And then it says, um, I'm operating a, a two acre, let me make this bigger so you guys are, but then I'm in the way. Okay. So I'm operating a two acre homestead, small farm about an hour north of Seattle, but I actually grew up in Hawaii and graduated Lahaina Luna. What's up Maui? Um, in 2000, I've been using um, permaculture and regenerative practices for many years, but over the years I've been studying KNF and applying it to the farm. My plants are healthier, and my yields are greater than ever. Hey, that's pretty cool. So that means that you know, with permaculture and and, and bio or what, permaculture and regenerative practices, KNF is adding even more to the ticket. So, again, just another thing of like, hey, this is this is cool stuff. I'm so glad that I went to Korea and be able to you know bring this to you guys and create the you know all this stuff and sharing. So. Um, of note, we suffered a loss of our peach crop last year due to fungal infection. Ah, oh, bummer. This year, when I saw the fungus start to pop up again, I sprayed the tree with the KNF protectors, also known as lactic acid bacteria, and the rest of the peaches were healthy and we were able to harvest a large amount of healthy fruit. So again, it's just further testament to like the KNF protectors that they protect it. You see something coming, you get it early, you spray it, you get the good guys there. They even were able to, to avert this fungal thing. That's amazing. Um, we, we also use the, the protectors in our chicken coop and goose run, and the smells have been greatly reduced. Oh, amazing. And after several attempts, I have successfully collected my first IMOs. Yes. Cool. And look forward to making the three and the four. So, you know, making activating it or propagating and activating it. So it's tuned into your soil in your area. That's what three and four are propagation and then activation with your soil tuning it. And, um, and then she says she's applied disgustingly cheap microbes in the meantime, though. So that's awesome. You can get started with that. So really, really want to thank you for, um, for sending this, uh, to me and, uh, you know, Mary, um, out, out in, uh, north of, an hour north of Seattle, which, um, you know, that's, we got, we just got married in Bellingham. So, um, my, my, that's where my wife is from and, uh, great area. Great. You know, I, I, sometimes like here I am in Hawaii in paradise. Right. And it's always like grass is greener on the other side. I'm looking like, I look at, I watch Julia's videos. I see these videos and I'm like, man, look at these gardens. When you have a winter to like, kill the weeds and then you have this like verdant spring takeoff it's like wow versus here in hawaii i'm always just grass grass growing never stops 
I, you know, I spent this past week, uh, that's actually what I did also this past week was mowing all around my pig pen, harvesting all that grass. And I'm talking like, you know, three, you know, like if I let it go a month, it's, it's tall grass. I mean, it just grows like crazy here. So been, been doing all that and getting those things together. Um, and so, yeah, so I want to thank you, um, for sending that in. And then let's see here. Um, got another email. Um, yeah, let's see here. Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, speaking of, um, um, yeah, Julia stuff up in Finland. I've been, been checking out her channel. It's, it's so it's, it's inspiring. I just, I just like, um, watching that um let's see here so we got we got this video here let me put this one in pull this up and pause this hang on switch this over transition this over and then uh this is her making uh water soluble calcium so um watching this looks like nice eggshells duck shells maybe who knows i think she has a lot of uh, chickens so eggshells crushing them up smart idea putting the um, cloth of the stick making sure there's they're small tiny this is awesome yeah cool and then yeah and smart to do this outside do not do this in your kitchen oh look at their goats awesome and then making a little fire. Oh, nice, smart on this oven, kind of like a rocket stove type of, oh man, homemade oven or homemade uh, burner thing, even cooler. And so she's toasting the eggshells up, right? The whole the whole thing is that if you, when you toast these up, you get rid of the moisture, um, but it also burns off any other organic matter that's there. So um, super cool, uh, great setup on this you know, outside with this and this little rocket stove type of thing she got going here. Oh, cool. And then winnowing off the, um, the eggshell or the, um, membranes. Super genius. Really cool. Um, and, um, yeah, smash that like button. Smash it so hard. Um, so yeah, check, check this out. Oh man, that's so cool. And then, yeah, winnowing it, stirring it, making sure it doesn't burn, right? I, I am going to speed this up just a, just a hair here, but she's winnowing this, getting it all. Oh, look how nice and toasty those are. That's perfect. Cool. Nice sunset. Yeah, I always look at this. I'm like, dang, that's nice. I mean, it's nice here in Hawaii, too. Don't get me wrong. It's always, it's just nice to see other folks and that sharing this Oh man, do you, hopefully you didn't burn yourself. But then, yeah, bringing it inside, doing the vinegar, and this this here, I know, I know, because I've already seen the the thumbnail that she ended up pouring all the vinegar in at once, and it overflowed. So learn learn from this when you when you see her doing this. Oh look look at those nice, getting these in here, and then she's gonna pour in the vinegar. But check it out. You should have stopped about there. You should have stopped about halfway because when she pours in this much, look how reactive it is. And I know what's going to happen. This is like you poured it all in. You did such a good job toasting this. Look how much activity there is. You did it perfectly. But you know what's going to happen is this is going to blow out the top and go over the top. I already know it because this is a, if this is your first time, this is a mistake everyone makes the first time. It gets so active. Watch. And I'm going to skip ahead just a little bit. But you see it, it's already starting to come out the top. There's nothing you can do at this point. So, oh, you can do it to all of them. Oh, no. Okay. Well, it's okay. It's okay. Um, but but put them in a bucket or something. You can collect this so that it doesn't over overgrow. But, but next time, just put in about that much vinegar. It'll start reacting. And then after about a half hour or so, once the reactions calm down, then add the rest of your vinegar. Cause watch, it's it's gonna it's gonna pop out the top. I know it. I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit, but look how she did such a good job toasting. Look how active this is, and that's the CO2 releasing, right? And then yeah, you know it came over the top. Yep. Oh yep, there it is. Oh, they're all gonna do it. Oh, yeah. So 
uh, learn learn from here and just do a little bit but look how active it is it's you know the co2 is is leaving it's because it's calcium carbonate right um and so that carbonate turns to co2 as it oxidizes with the vinegar and leaves the calcium in solution behind which turns to calcium acetate right um yeah <laughs> yeah and it's it's yeah it's fun to watch and to see um, but yeah, just bubbling over. So, and then this, this, this process takes about, uh, you know, seven to 10 days or so, or actually, excuse me, this, in my experience, it's less than five days of what's happening. And, um, you know, and you can taste it in the first day, it'll taste like vinegar. Next day, it'll taste like, you know, the, the, the vinegar goes away and, uh, eventually, you know, all the calcium has been dissolved. Um, so it, it really, for me, in, in my case, three, three to five days, and you basically got calcium. However, the, the bones, the structure that you make takes longer. So, but this recipe, because calcium so easy to dissolve, it, it happens so quickly. Um, yeah. And she said she tried it after seven days and it was done and there should be no vinegar bite anymore. It should, in fact, on your tongue, if this is the tip of your tongue and that's where it's connected to your mouth, it should activate this part of your tongue where it's kind of this chalky like taste right here on the top of your tongue and um so then you know it's done there's no vinegar bite and it just tastes chalky on that part of your tongue so that's cool thank you thank you so much julia for sending that in it's it's that's it's really cool to see um and then she also has a video here um let's see of going through and I think this one's collecting IMOs. Um, let's see here. So transition this one over. And um, so this looks like they're collecting their IMOs. So they built these nice little boxes. So that's cool. And I think this is her friend that she's teaching about this, like that she's interested in uh, microbes. Yeah, rice tastes good. You can see her explaining that stuff. and. Oh, look how fun that is setting all these boxes up and good good idea to use the stick your hands are have imos so try to keep your hands off the actual <laughs> microbes themselves but good job packing it up two-thirds here um and then looks like they're putting the paper lids on stapling them on so they don't sag down giving it that um you know um one-third airspace so they can communicate in quorum sense and looks like they're putting a little bit of hardware cloth over the top to keep the animals out. Smart, really cool, great job. Uh, and then let's see here, they, I think they're going to head out to the woods here. Oh, look at those nice woods. You're going to get a great collection in these woods. Um, when, you're, when you are setting it, one tip too, um, put it under the broadleaf trees. And also bury it down a little bit. So bury it so that, um, you know, this box... Put it down a little bit so if you if you dig in like um just just to show here just real quick on this um let's see here i'll pull this one up over here of that in the book let's see here hang on I'm trying to pull all this stuff up um but let me see um if you look at this here let's see uh back over. So if you look at this, um, do dig down, dig down into the ground, uh, just setting it on the surface. Um, yeah, I know some, some folks on the internet will show that in their video and stuff, but if you dig down like this and put it into your soil and then take that soil and put it on top and then the leaf litter around it to make this kind of cocoon, you'll get even better results. So not to say that it's not bad to just put it on the surface because those microbes will go up, but you do want to dig into your soil because you're after the soil microbes. You're after these guys. So digging down into it and especially, um, you know, it can get cooler at night up in Finland and stuff. I, I, I would assume, um, you know, similar to Montana where it gets cold as heck at night, um, but digging down and putting it in, you'll get even better results. So uh, let's, let's go back and go back to this video and keep playing this guy um, and see. Um, but yeah, put, putting these out there and it does look like you are digging down. Okay. Okay. So maybe I, I spoke too soon on this, but yeah, putting it down, putting it in so that it's really and putting it under your broadleaf plants. This is great. Awesome idea. Great collections. Um, hopefully it's turned out good for you. I'm, I'm, um, 
Okay. Yeah, so... Um, and then while while we're watching this, it's it's good, um, and there's a question from Adrian here. Oh, this, this looks like a real nice collection. I'm putting, putting the shield over. Um, but she's asking about making um, the can of food fermented plant juice from mugwort, but it refuses to get liquid. It actually got drier over the course of the week. How would I fix that? Um, by adding a little bit of salt to your mix, about 10% of what how much sugar you're adding. Also, mugwort is just, it tends to be dry. So harvesting at the right season, like spring is the best time to harvest it when the plant's are real vigorous, getting the tips um, and planting up. Yeah, nice. And But cocoon that thing, man. Put, put, put more. Okay, sticks, good, 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 good. Yeah, this is good. So yeah, it's nice. It's, it's great to see this and, and to share and to see all this. Um, and yeah, this, this will work in a bamboo forest too, uh, really well. Um, you know, you're, you're collecting these soil microbes. This, this actually looks like a real good job. I think I maybe I spoke too soon when I said about digging down, like that looks like a real good one. And, ah, oh, look at this. It's, it's so cool. You put out multiple collections because you'll get to see these different, um, you know, and here you can see the lichen out there. So you'll get lichen formis and all these things. This nice woods looks undisturbed. That's a great, great thing. And all the microbes breaking these down, powering these trees up. I'm going to collect all that. Um, so bamboo is another great place to collect. Um, let's see here. Video. I'm just going to skip ahead a little bit. Oh, cool. Here's the nice collections out there. Um, oh, and then if you see mushrooms happening, you know there's mycelia. Um, and she put out seven collections. That's awesome. Um, and don't don't use the cardboard as an inoculant. Um, cardboard's gonna have all kinds of gnarly things. Um, um, but you're saying in a cardboard box. Um, yeah, a, a cardboard box isn't isn't the. Oh, look at those berries, man. That's amazing. I I, I just have thimble berries where they're <laughs> they're all <laughs> spiky. Uh, but yeah, look at this. Oh, this is such a cool environment to go collect in and. Um, and then look at this, you know, she's really been, it's, it's been fun to watch her, her, um, her videos over this year of seeing the microbes coming in and where she's collecting just right next door to her garden, she's saying, and it's, it's amazing. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And she did dig down a little to get the things on top. Okay, cool. So, um, yeah, so, um. So, and then HJS Divine Hands is saying, if my LA police or, you know, LAB mixed with brown sugar is starting to get some type of, type of clear stuff on top, what is it and should I get rid of it? Um, one thing to know is that storing KNF protectors, they're the most active microbes to store. So try to use them a little quicker. So if something's getting on top after you've been storing it, clear stuff, just go through it a bit a bit quicker or put it in the fridge or keep the temperature from fluctuating up and down. Um, your nose knows, and if it smells nasty, don't use it. Um, but if it smells okay, go for it. And um, so seeing seeing all these things, this is this is pretty amazing here. Um, let's see what else. I got another um, video here, or not a video here, but... Um, um, a picture share from the goof man. Um, and so check this out. He's, he says he's, um, I think it says what it, what does it say? I think he's prepping for like, uh, 10 gallons to spray. So check this out. He, he measures the stuff out, then he's adding it to this spraying tip. And then this is like an auto diluter. He's able to set it up. So he sets it. So uh, instead of carrying a bunch of stuff around, the hose is actually diluting it from these concentrates that he's put in. And But look at these different spraying setups and these different things he has. Like, how cool is that? Like, small misting sprayer. This looks like a battery-powered one. And this other setup. So it's just cool to see um, these different techs and different technologies. But I really like this idea of you know, just having it dilute as you're spraying it out and you can change the spray pattern here. And if you set this up right, it'll it'll dilute it out for you in situ. 
So that's that's a cool technology there that he's doing. And then he sent me a photo of his front flower garden here where, um, you know, just look, I mean, look at these nice flowers going off. And, you know, I, when, I, when I was first looking at this before I started the show, I was looking and I was thinking to myself, you know, like the classic way that people tell people to do this is to like get some miracle grow and throw it out here. And, and that's what people know is like, go get miracle grow. You want your flowers to grow, miracle grow. But that just bakes out your soil, causes problems over the long run, causes disease. And then you have to go to back to the same store and buy their pest solutions. And look at this. His soil is getting healthier. His flowers are kicking butt. And this is just like, imagine every home had a nice flower garden in front where you're not only are you growing flowers, you're also enriching the soil, you're improving your water quality runoff, improving the air quality, reducing the carbon footprint, uh, promoting peace, right? I mean, like these are the things, the values that um, I'm so glad to share this and show this and just be like, this is the stuff. These these are the things. And then um, let's see here. Uh, it looks like I need access to access any of the other, the back garden that you sent me. Um, I don't, you know, you sent those photos, but I don't have access to them. So that's okay. Um, and then um, I got one, one other email here that I wanted to go over. And this was a question from Mao. Um, and, he, and he asked me, um, you know, hope all is good. He has a quick question. He says, I'm just wondering why it is necessary to use all the solutions after introducing beneficial microbes to my soil. Wouldn't the IMOs create the conditions for my plants to thrive without my help? And this is absolutely true, Mao. You're, you're absolutely correct. Typically, when you hear from, well, thank, thanks to Goofman. Um, typically, when you hear from Master Cho, it's you, what you're doing is you're putting down the IMOs and then you're feeding them. And it's just like, you know, like a kid, like you want to, you want to put, you know, introduce good kids, but you also want to give them on the job training so that they can get good. And eventually they'll be good and then they'll rear the next generation and it'll, it'll be this succession type of thing. Um, so the, the answer to answer your question is if you do put the beneficial microbes in the soil, um, they will create the conditions to thrive. But if you really want to help them establish and you really want to jumpstart that process, applying the maintenance solution, applying the soil solution, applying the leaf solution to your plants can help you kickstart through that, pro that process. So eventually, it's just like speeding yourself up. It's like you could say you could just get good people, but if you get good people and you give them the resources they need, they're going to be even better. You could just send good people into the woods and be like, go figure it out. But if you you know, and they will, they will, right? But if you take good people plus send them supplies and, and resupply them with supplies on, the, on a good frequency, they'll be even more productive. And then at a certain point, once that production comes in, then they'll be able to build their own systems. So in the case of where um, I'm going to pull up one video from my channel here, um, you know, and um, try and try and find this thing relatively quickly let's let's see if how quickly i can do this um but what i what i want to show you is it's it's from it's from the old um so it's it so i'm gonna go i'll transition over here and show you how i'm finding this but on my channel here um so click it below you know um here is the thing and i'm gonna go scroll down here to where um there are uh demo farms in korea and in this playlist here um which is the korean farming 2008 when i went to korea i'll click on that guy and then here um not this playlist but this the playlist here this persimmon orchard farm and um or no no this isn't the right one um oh no do i not have it in here Maybe I didn't get any video from that farm. Oh, darn. Well, okay. Yeah, no, I didn't. I don't think I got this one here. So uh, bunk on that one. Sorry, you guys. Maybe that's why. But um, anyway, we went to this amazing farm up on this hillside, and I had to have footage from that. I had to. Maybe maybe I lost it, though. It's Oh, man. 
you know, this was my old camera, um, my old Sony, and it was on uh, mini DV tapes, and I have them, but it, my camera broke, and now I can't get that stuff off the mini DV. Um, you know, I, I don't have it in here, I guess. Um, but anyway, the, the point is that, um, that basically these guys practiced KNF so well that eventually a really nice ground cover came in and they didn't have to do much. He would just spray calciums right before harvest to just help the fruit have a little better uh, shelf life. And he really wasn't doing any more IMOs because it came, came to, um, you know, uh, self-sufficiency. So to answer your question, Mao. Yeah, like your your land will get self sufficient, and you will have these things um, happen for you. But while you're getting there, you wanna you wanna help it along that transition and give it the supplies it needs, and make sure you're there. So, and then he says that leads to the second question: Can I make good IMO without any of the other inputs, and then just to focus on applying IMOs without soil foundation formula or any of the other stuff? And you can. You can it just it you the whole point of adding these resources, the other solutions, the other um, other things in there, the right formulas at the right time is Master Cho always talks about you know right right food, right time, right amount, right. So the right right nutrient, right time, right amount, and if if you help it by giving those things at the right times by instead of just taking some pe like like again the analogy of taking good people and throwing them in the woods and saying good luck if you also send them the right supplies at the right time and um you know the right amount of them instead of you know giving them too much of the the right thing right time but way too much or way too little you know you got to balance all that out those three things then you get the best things happening there so um so all those things come come together um and work um and make it make it all happen so um so th that's the key so yes you can you can just implement a part a fragment of natural farming you can say i just want to focus just on the imos you can you can say i want to focus just on can of food and feeding you can you want to just focus on just the cleanser and just put vinegars out you can but if you combine all these things, all nine core solutions at the right time, you put them in the right ratios and you give them, you know, your plants, everything, you know, you see the success of people that are following um, the correct formulas and the people that actually implement them. And I'm sure there's hybrids of everybody doing, you know, different parts, different, you know, it's impossible to be like pure KNF, even though, you know, here we are with the pure KNF foundation, right? And to do it, you know, because nature is this gray area it is this line it is these things between um so um but making making these things happen um doing doing it right um you know um <laughs> this this is this is the the answer you know the the more the more you can follow master cho's recipes he you know he really knew what was up he really you know like the the animals are part of the proof you know you see it there cuz they just thrive and you can solve all these problems and then but the plants are also you know um when you do it right it's just it it's just amazing so uh, big shout out to master cho here you know i keep him up on my wall every you know as a constant reminder that you know i'm just a messenger of doing his thing of you know, synthesizing, building it here, adapting it to Hawaii, but also sharing it globally because these methods work everywhere. These recipes, you know, um, and I, I like this, like this thing here where, uh, Julia was saying she had a dream the other night. She was at a flea market that had huge glass jars and she got all of them. <laughs> like those are the fantasies of the natural farmers, right? Where we have, you know, um, these things and what's, what's the nightmare of the natural farmer? It's like, there's an earthquake and all my OHN jars broke, you know, all my, all my KNF medicine, you know, or, or my pig got out and knocked everything else over. Um, you know, so I just, you know, like these, these are the things, but, but anyway, re returning back to the master Cho, it's like, you know, the giving, giving credit to where credit's due. I couldn't do anything without, you know, I, I don't know where I'd be without him. And, uh, you know, 
um, do, doing my thing here, trying to share the love, bringing it out to you guys, you know, reaching about 10 o'clock. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Um, it's really been an enjoyable day for me, you know, um, biting through, you know, trying to get through all, all these challenges we have, keep a positive attitude, realize that, you know, if we continue to do good, God does good for us, you know, opens our hearts, um, opens our minds, continues to, to, um, help us all. So, um, yeah, um, just, uh, last, last little bit that I got is, man, I, so one other thing I've been up to this week has been reading my good friend, uh, Robert's rules of order and rules online and helping specifically reviewing committees and boards and getting our certification committee together and really getting it top notch so that we are following, uh, the bylaws. And because we specify, we follow Robert's rules of order, we're doing that and, We've been just working a whole bunch to get our, um, really what we're working on, our goal number one for this um, is to get our um, our directory together for you guys. So understanding, uh, working with our committee to understand how to write requirements for software and then how to build the architecture and then get into construction and put all those starting with a purpose and a goal so that we stay focused and make these things happen. And it's wild to get into these things and make it happen. So, um, you know, been working behind the scenes, um, you know, the micro small things I do, um, you know, uh, Pure KNF Foundation, I want to thank them. Couldn't do this without them and all the supporters that, that make that happen. So purekf.org, um, checking it out. They sponsor this office hour. Also, KNF Times and all this, you know, great things that they do and getting our certification and our directory together. We're focusing on those things right now to really bring them top notch because we were on this doing it really well. And then, but key is to stay like within the bylaws, within an organization, within these things. And um, so anyway, I want to thank you for tuning in. want to thank you for making it this far, you know, do the usual YouTube things, but more than anything, get out there, do natural farming, send me some fo photos, send me some videos. It was really inspiring this week. I want to thank you all. Love you guys very much. And uh, as always, long live the natural farmer. Aloha.